Hello, this is Sam Paternos. Hello, this is Sam Paternos here with Jake Brown with Irish Illustrator. And I, I would like to ask you a few questions. Um, one question would be, are you assigned to go and watch specific players? Or are you just going to be in the best games of the week? Uh, it's pretty specific players. So I'm only really worried about um, kids that Notre Dame is recruiting specifically. Uh, if they have scholarship offers, it's all the better. Um, but for as long as Notre Dame is looking at them, I'm interested. Um, so I'll pretty much go wherever, Chicago suburbs, Detroit. We're just lucky this week that there's a game right in our backyard where there's another name kid. Another high expectations for next year's team. Did you have any part in that? No, I mean our job is just to uh, just to cover it. We're just observers. Um, you know, we don't do any recruiting for Notre Dame. It's not really part of what we do. That's just coaching staff and, and Notre Dame staff. Um, so you know, our job is just to kind of relay information to people, fans, curious about the kids that Notre Dame is recruiting, and kind of the next line of players coming in. Okay, and then when when you go to these high school football games, like game of the weeks and stuff, what do you look for specifically in the players that you're watching? Well, I mean, most of them are already well known, so it's not like I'm like out discovering anybody new or anything. But we're just trying to see if, if kind of height matches up with what we see on the field, um, you know, to make sure that they're as good as people say they are. You know, and then we kind of analyze their game. We'll go back and watch their film and, and see what we think and form our own opinions. But it's really just to kind of match up uh, what we've heard or what we've watched on video with what we see online. Uh, and so, is it a one game and or do you come back multiple games to watch a game? Really like it's just it kind of depends on the schedule. Um, I try and see everybody I can within probably about a two hour, three hour drive radius. Uh, and then every once in a while we'll fly down to like Dallas or somebody else. She's somewhere she fits down there. But uh, maybe later in the year I'll double up and take another playoffs or whatever. But usually it's just one time um, per year unless the schedule allows or something. And then, uh, uh, what do you think about the talent on the field tonight? It's good. I mean, I, I already knew what to expect from Penn. I grew up in the area, so I know Penn is good year in, year out. It's actually my first time seeing St. Mary's. Um, I've heard a lot about them, and, you know, Josh Ross, their linebacker, junior linebacker, the Notre Dame's looking at is as good as they advertise. He was in on, like, I feel like almost every play. Um, and the wide receiver, KJ Hamler, caught that 44 yard pass on the sideline. As good as I've seen in a camp setting, I've like, got uh, translate over here tonight. Uh, you know, I like Penn. They've got some, they've got some talent. They've shown why they're one of the best teams in the state. Um, and obviously, the offensive tackle Ben Newton is going to Virginia. And I like Big Kid. Um, got room to grow. Got room to probably get a little next year, which they'll want at the next level, but it's kind of a lot to work with. And uh, as the as the linebacker, you know, what you're looking at uh, Ross, yeah. Josh Ross, but what do you expect to see? Well, I mean, the big thing that you're looking for. Yeah, as a as a, as a middle linebacker, I want him to to see him kind of take control. A lot of times, the middle linebacker has to communicate the defense and get everybody lined up. It looks like he's done a good job of that. And uh, you know, his brother was a big time recruit too. He's kind of knew what to expect. Uh, he reads the play well, gets through traffic, makes tackles. That's the most important thing for me as a middle linebacker. Not only do you have to read it well, but then you have to wade through all the traffic that's going to be in front of you to get the ball. He's done a really nice job of that. He is basically the quarterback of the defense. Yeah, it's, it looks like he's a captain. It looks like he's basically making all the calls or relaying all the calls into the coaching staff. Uh, and that's a good thing. I mean, you want that next level, he's going to need to do that eventually when he's older. So it's good to get some experience with that now. And everything I see, I like it. It matches up with what I've heard and what I've seen in different settings. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. This is Jake Brown from Irish Illustrated. He's trying to get the Irish team as best as he can. All right, great. Thanks, Jake. Thank you, Jake. Don't be so nervous. <laughs>
All right, and welcome back. There is four minutes and 53 seconds left until the start of the third quarter. Um, the Finn Kingsmen are down 14-21, and now off to my partner, Sam, with your halftime stats. And the total offense by Overlake St. Mary's uh, right now numbers the Kingsman by almost 100 yards, 244 to 149. All each having the same amount of plays at 25. And Cam Bone is 10 for 11 passing for 95 yards and a touchdown. While Paul St. Mary's is 3 for 3 for 63, 61 yards and a touchdown. Rushing has been dominated by St. Mary's but has a 183 yards to Penn's 54. And Penn has the hand on receiving 95 to 61. And Cam Bone is throwing a, throwing a really good game, actually. 10 of 11 for 95 yards and a touchdown. Not what you really expected from a running team like that. Uh, no, but the one thing that I've noticed, I. I um yeah I also noticed about Cam last year, um as far as his play on the field, he is more of a dominant. He is more of a dominant running quarterback, but also as far as throwing wise, when he needs to get that done, he can get that done. As far as we have seen, Camden Bone. I believe has connected what about eight to Bryce Forty, one to Nolan Metcalf, and one to John Olson. Uh, Nolan Metcalf had an outstanding diving catch to keep the drive alive late in the two-minute offense that the Kingsmen were running right before they scored the touchdown to Bryce Forty. Um, Bryce Forty has definitely made some difficult catches himself because Camden Bone, as even though he is 10 for 11, he has not been completely accurate with all his throws. Um, the quarterback for Orchard Lake St. Mary's is Brandon Tabone. He is 3 for 3 with 61 yards and three touchdowns. He completed a long pass to his receiver, Kali Hamler, who, as we mentioned, is one of the one of the two juniors that are in the ESPN 200 class, as is Joshua Ross, who is a running back and a linebacker. He is being recruited as a linebacker, according to ESPN. Yes, he has offers from Michigan, Michigan State, Notre Dame, and Ohio State. He does have he does have more offers, as you would probably guess, if him being a four star athlete. Um, but as far as like giving a list, that is what he has given to ESPN. Um, speaking of D1 players, you have um, senior offensive lineman Karen Coolwich, who is out with a spleen injury. Um, he is committed to Northwestern. And the teams are now back on the field. The Kingsmen are still running in since they have a fairly large roster, <laughs> which is very safe to say. <laughs> um, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's is lined up at the huddle. If you're um, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, what would you do to continue the success you've had against Penn? Uh, I would say mix it up with the pass and run a little bit more as Penn's defense has come out the last two times and stopped them for punts. And it looks like they're a little bit too predictable running the ball, so maybe a little bit more passing because they've only thrown three times and they have connected all three times. And if you are just now joining us on all three pass attempts, they have lined up in a shotgun formation, except for, I want to say about two of them, they lined up in shotgun, shotgun formation at land. Um, out of uh, Orchard Lake St. Mary's Preparatorium, you will see more of a wishbone offense from them. With the Penn Kingsmen, you will see a kind of like a spread offense, like, 
most of college football runs today um, with Camden Bone. He is more of a lead option quarterback, and a lead option is on um, that certain play, Camden Bone will either keep the ball or he will hand it off to one of his running backs who so far we have seen it. Cedric Bakalahi, a senior, or Landon March, who is a junior, I believe. That is correct. What has been the most surprising factor in the run game is the absence of Cam Bone. He has nine carries for only 19 yards, averaging a mere 2.1 per carry. Well, I, I think there's a little bit more to that. Because if you look at the offensive line, they are not what you are used to seeing out of Penn. Um, if you're Penn, what do you need to do to come back or just hold them to 21 and potentially win 28 to 21, 24 to 21? Because even though the score says it might have been a little bit more of an offensive game, at, Early off, it was a defensive game. Yeah, if I'm Penn, I, uh, I definitely look to keep running and pounding the ball. Looking up, up over the middle, the middle has been very open over these cover two safeties. And Penn is just, Penn really came out on that last drive and showed, showed some promise the last two drives. And, Yes, and with St. Mary's, with their cover two, what the one bad thing about if you run cover two is it leaves your middle wide open, not necessarily a long pass to the middle, but more like a short middle yard because you have your safety, which in the cover two you generally only have one safety, and he is playing back a good, I don't know, 15, 20 yards off the line of scrimmage when you have your cornerbacks playing generally man-to-man -man with the receiver. And if he can beat him off the line in, let's say, a slant watch, a lot of passes up the middle were slants that ended up getting the route changed down the middle to just the cam bonus ended up leading um, by 40 most of the time. To where he had the ball and he was able to just one run straight down the middle. Um, Orchard Lake St. Mary's is going to kick off to Penn High School to start the game. There is a change in how they are going to receive. Awesome often is still in the back. Um, James Abelucci is still to the near side, but to the far side instead of Cedric Bakalahi. And John Olsen is, is back on the field. I did get word that he was afraid of the bird. He was walked to the locker room after the first quarter. Looking a little bit bruised from a big hit or something. And he was the one who returned that 59 yard punt return. So this is a big play back on the field for and it is kicked, but into the end zone and caught by Austin Hoffman. It will be a first and ten in a familiar territory the Kingston have seen themselves starting at their own 20-yard line. Yes, the does have a on us. All right. So if you are just now joining us, our the starting lineup for the offensive line, right tackle Daniel Yu, right guard Max Bernard, center Anthony Lavisa, left guard Mike Duty and third and left tackle Benjamin Newton, who is a Virginia commit. They have really struggled against this defense so far. And the bone takes a snap, passes it to John Olson. He avoids a tackle and he is taken down to the far end. And I wouldn't say he's coming off Lucy after that one. He got up just fine. Yeah, that's a great, great sign right there. Going right back to their star wide receiver. And it actually sends a message to uh, the Lake St. Mary's that Penn will throw. They're going to throw it right away first. You know, that was only a gain of two yards. It did immensely help the team. In ways. And if you're just now joining us, the rest of the starting offense, or gold rush, I should say, is tight end Nolan Metcalf, 
Um, the wide receivers are Bryce Morty, who's a split in, and John Olson is the flanker. The running backs are Cedric Bakalahi, and Austin Hoffman is what it says. But it has been more land in March than Austin Hoffman. Quarterback is, as we have said, is Camden Bowe. And it looks like there was a holding on the offense. And now it is. Which puts them back to the 11 yard line. No, well, they said second 19, but the scoreboard originally said tw second two. And they come out of the huddle. Camden Bone is in the backfield. Said that Bakalahi is right next to him. There are two receivers. No, there are three receivers to the near side. Snap is hand off the center back line. He, he breaks. He breaks through a hole, and I believe he gets back to a third and ten, I would say, or third and eleven. That is a very, very successful run. Well, this is also what we saw more towards the end of the second half. The Kingsmen able to open up more gaps with their offensive line and the running backs in, and the quarterback have been able to find their way through the holes and maneuver, and they are able to take a couple guys down with them while moving forward instead of being moved back. There are two lined up to the near side. Three, those. Oh, he has Bryce Forty. Bryce Forty goes. That was almost a 20-yard completion from Camden Bone to Bryce Forty. I saw the reliable now in this game. Bryce Forty has caught all of the passes thrown his way except for one that was not that was not a catchable pass. Cam has certainly been looking his way often and early this quarter. Well, when he's getting a good three, four yards off the if there was the cornerback's giving him a good three, four yards, and Cam Bone can deliver a Nice pass. Doesn't have to be a line drive, but it has to be nice enough. And Cam Bone was through. Oh! And he was an arm tackle away from a touchdown. Touchdown saving tackle by the linebacker of St. Mary's. First and 10 on St. Mary's 49 yard line. The Kingsmen have definitely come out and they are looking, looking to tie this game. So far, the drive is two minutes and counting. Um, John Olson, Royce Forty, and Matt Kamakiewicz, in order, are lined up to the far end. Kim Bone and Rashid Fahim are in the backfield. There is a swing pass to Olsen. And that is an eight-yard run, which looked like more to me, but... Apparently, there is someone waiting there, but you cannot see because there is a big, giant hole in front of me. Trips to the right. Trips to the right. It looked like also just slipped back on bubble screen. Yes. Um, as far as that bubble screen, that was... You couldn't really tell that out much better. Um, right now, it is actually pretty chilly out. <laughs> there are two receivers in the side, Bryce Forty. Camden Boone gets the first down, but fumble. And Orchard Lake St. Mary's recovers. And yes, and they ruled it as a turnover. Man, that's really got to be deflating for the Kingsman offense after the good opening drive they had. Yes. And now, may, hopefully, a decision change by the referees. The offense is just not coming off the field. Defense is heading on, and St. Mary's lines up in the wishbone. And they are not necessarily playing full in the box. And there is a snap, and the pile is just moving forward in St. Mary's favor. Yes. I'm, it's a little 
it looks like they marked he got about five yards on that rush. He just the pile just kind of started up. He just kept on moving his feet. All right, and they line up in the wishbone again, the second five on their own 37. Hands off, and they are stuck for about a one-yard gain. It is going to be third and four or third and five on their own 37, oh, 39-yard line. So it will be third and three. And now it's minus the wishbone, just a fullback. So they, we have seen a pass from Orchards Lake and dot back pass. Throw is a completion, and he just continued to run. That was some sloppy tackling right there. We know where the Kingston secondary was. I felt like they saw him, and they just weren't able to wrap him up there. Right on the receiver on the curl pattern. Well, he was he's definitely an elusive receiver, that's for sure. And like I said, at half, uh, St. Mary's has been efficient at passing, passing the ball for the four. In the wishbone, there's a handoff, bounces off a tackle, but does not go anywhere from there. It's looking like it is about to be a six and ten. No, it is actually six and nine on the Kingsman thirty-seven yard line. Um, going back to that last play, how do you not read a curl off the bat? Because the quarterback is playing so far off the line to start the play, anyways. Um, second nine on the Kingsman thirty-seven. Which way lines up? And the wishbone play action, a very good play action was trying to fool the defense. He's wide open and in the flat, and he gets the first down. He gets the first down. It is first and ten. Looks to be around the twenty-six yard line. The Eaglets, the Eaglets completely fooled him with a play action. There is pins. Outside linebacker was coming in hard, but just not able to get there in time. I feel like when you constantly run, run out of wishbone and do nothing else, that play is bound to work. Um, on the center from the wishbone, Long finds a hole, gets about. I'm gonna say about five yards. That that was a decent run. But in a second five on the Kingsman. 21 with six minutes and 25 seconds left. Um, the Kingsmen were looking forward to tie the game, a fumble, and the Eaglets are still on their drive to try and go up by two scores. From the wishbone, there goes the snap, hand it off, and the Kingsmen stop him just short of the first down. Now the Eaglets are on the Kingsmen 17 yard line. And, to and, to and the ball is a little bit towards the middle of the field, but a little more towards the far sideline. And they line up in the wishbone formation. And the Kingsmen the hold them to uh, that. Will we see the kicking unit? Will we see the kicking unit from the Eaglets? It's looking like it, it's 4 and 1. I, I haven't seen the kicker come out. They need to make this stand right here. If they want to have momentum swing their way. This is a huge swing in. Oh, he broke through. And he got the first down. Busted through the line. Somehow made his way without getting hit for the first four yards. Yes. Um. With it, he's on the twelve on the Kingsman's twelve yard line, first and ten. Um, 
The Ultra Lake St. Mary's are definitely a team that will make you pay over off a turnover, and that is what they are doing right now. There was a handoff, and there was a boat. That was a two-yard game. It is second and eight on the Kingsmen. Ten yard line, uh, four fifteen and counting in the third quarter. The Eaglets are beating the Kingsmen twenty one to fourteen. The Eaglets line up in a wishbone formation again. The snap, a little bit of a spin move in the middle, which could be dangerous as a running back because you never know where that hit is going to come from. And they are inside the ten yard line. It is third and six. Oh, third and five on the eight yard line. And the senior running back, number three, Justin Myrick, is running very hard this game. He's just pounding for every yard. And one thing I've noticed, he's always falling forward after the jury gets tackled. Never been. I, I think I think that is a very important thing as a running back you need to do. Oh, Jordan, please. Oh! oh. And right there, they passed the ball. It looked like it was going to be a very, very close play. Austin Luckman comes up. He breaks up the pass. It is fourth and, it's fourth and five on the Kingsman eight-yard line. The field goal unit comes out for um, about a 25-yard field goal. All right, and there's a snap, the kick is up, and it is good. Great stand up by the Penguins, and as they were defending, but they did not break. The Eagles got all the way down inside their 10 yard line and then managed to stop them for just three points. Um, In that situation, you definitely, it, I, I feel like even though you had the turnover, they come back and they score three points. That is still a, even though you don't want them to score any runs, that on I mean, any points, <laughs> you don't want them to get a touchdown in that situation, especially when they were knocking on your door the whole time. That's a very impressive stand by the Wild Bunch. Ultra Lake St. Mary is now with 304 yards of total offense, 209 of that coming from rushing. As Brandon's home is 5 for 6 for 95 yards and a touchdown. And PJ Bauer, 5 carries, 95 yards. Brandon Adams, 8 carries, 57 yards. Justin Myrick, 15 carries for 34 yards. And Trey Marks, 3 carries for 22 yards. And now on the kickoff, you have all Austin Hoffman, down back slot, you have James Epilucci on the near side, and John Olsen to the far side. They are playing farther back than they usually do since this kicker, every kickoff has put it toward, has put it in the end zone, and this kick is no different. Austin Hoffman's speed is not being able to be shown off right now. He has not even had an opportunity to take the ball out on a kickoff. On all the kickoffs, Austin Hoffman has received all of them except for one where Cedric Pakawahi did have a little bit of a muff kick, but no harm was done. Um, now coming out of the huddle, we have James Abelucci on the near side, um, John Olsen and Bryce Forty in order to the far side. Leonard Marks is the running back, and then Camden Baum hands off to Marks, and he got a couple of yards on there. Um, Cedric Bakalahi is now entering the game for Landon Marks. James Abelucci is as well coming off the field. John Olson and John Olson stays on. Bryce Forty stays on. James Epilucci runs back onto the field with the play. Um, he come out of the snap. Um, there are three receivers 
uh, to the far side, since Makalaki is to the east on the Canyon Mountain. Game off. And, well, I think it's safe to say he took almost everybody right there. <laughs> yes, um, that, that was enough for the first down. Um, the Kingsmen are on their own 32-yard line. It is first and 10 with 2 minutes and 15 seconds counting down in the third quarter. They line up. There are trips to the far side. And the snap the ball. This is a sign run. He hits a hole. Doesn't get much, but he gets... What two yards? Looks like a uh, second and eight now. On their own 34 yard line. QB runs have not been as effective when it's a design run as, as much as when, it, when it's a pump and go draw run. When it fakes down the field. I feel like a, I, I feel like a play that's worked out well for them is doing those zone read passes that they have run. Those have been. A lot of passes they have gone, not very successful. There is motion. Oh, a bad oh, and but there is a flag, false start, and it looks like it doesn't. It looks like that won't even hurt the Kingsman as bad as it should have. Uh, I I don't know what happened with that bobble and snap you had. Um, I believe it was John Olson in motion. He had the ball went right past John Olson. I think it was a little bit wide. Um, went past Cannon Bowl and Cedric Bakalaki would, would have had to run for his life if he if that play was not stopped dead. Matt Kamkiewicz lines up to the near side. The far side is Epilucci and Vordy. Cambone lines up for the pass. He's running out, trying not to get snap, set. But Joshua Ross, go, Joshua Ross breaks right through the offensive line and forces Cambone right into the waiting arms of the defensive tackle, or defensive end, I should say. Um, it is 3rd and, uh, and 18 on the Kingsman's 24-yard line. There is 30 seconds in counting until the end of the third quarter. This is an obvious passing situation. I think they're just going to run down this clock to try and get to the fourth quarter. We have three receivers out to the right. Is um, John Olson, Appalucci, and Vordy. Cannon Bone almost bobbles the snap again. The Cannon Bone is on a nice run. Two. Cannon Bone is not given the first down. And horrible spot by the referee. I felt like Cam dove and reached for it. He's begging. He's waiting for that spot. And Cam looks like he wants to stay out there for the fourth quarter. He keeps talking to that ref about that spot. <laughs> well, that is the end of the third quarter. Orchard Lake St. Mary's leads Penn 24 to 14, which is sure to be. It, if this acts like the end of the end of the first half, we're in for a wild fourth quarter. Um, it is fourth and one. Kingsman are on there 41. Um, as it looks like they have their offense in the huddle. It looks like they have their offense in the huddle, and it doesn't look like they are worrying about the special teams because I do not see the punter in that huddle right there. Yeah, this is, this is decision time for Coach Yeoman. Fourth and one at your own, at your own 21. It looks like he could, he could go for it or he could punt it either way. Punting it would be the smart, would be the safer option, but down 10, 12 minutes left. Well, in this situation, why don't you just. Pin is going for it. Pin's going for it. I would say more like a stone read. 
because like come on that that has definitely worked for them I do, I do think that maybe a fake or a look at the passing option that maybe Cam just takes it. It's only a yard. But yeah. The running game has been, running game has been short in this game, has been stopped a lot. Uh, the Kingsmen are definitely going to block. Cannonbone is under center. A mini wishbone system back there with two running backs, no fullback. Cannonbone's under is under, and there's a QB sneak, but he gets nowhere. Wow, that is. And I think the one thing that needs to be pointed out about. Um, St. Mary's is a lot of their players are playing both ways. Iron Man offense and defense right there. And, and well, let me go back to that QB sneak there because that's what Cam tried to do. And the QB sneak, you have to let the offense at least push them back far enough. The, the guy who does it the best is Tom Brady in the NFL. He just goes right underneath the center right there and get he gains two yards every time. And Cam just tried to barrel it right once he got the ball and didn't let it have time at all. They line up in the wishbone formation. Justin Meyer was stopped at the 39, uh, at the pit number 39, and so now it is second and eight. Um, that, that has been a lot of the runs that St. Mary's has had recently. I don't think they are necessarily trying to go for the home run as much as just run the clock down. Hand off to Adams, number 20, pushes it forward, and that's really what they're doing. They're All they're doing is round and pound right there. Uh, if you're St. Mary's, that's, the, that's in a way just – how you need to handle as long as you can hang on to the football. It doesn't matter whether you pass it or run it, but in most situations, you, you are going to run it because you have a safer way of just keeping the clock moving. Yeah, it is. You can definitely see that St. Mary's is trying to run out the clock here on a third and three at Penn's 34. It's going to be a huge stop for the Penn's as it is on the verge, at the, at the verge of field goal range. Timeout, St. Mary's. Um, and um, I don't know if everybody was here, but at halftime, they did announce the 2014-2015 4A state championships for the Kingsman baseball team. They did also receive their rings at this moment. Um, now let's make it relatable to football. <laughs> the tight end, Nolan Metcalf, was a contributor in that um as you may know Skylar Sinsky was also a part of the football team at one point. He was a receiver. So was uh pitcher RJ Green. If if they would have stayed playing football, they would have been some more hype with the receivers. We do have a very short receivers. Yes. Our our receivers at John Olson is 5'10, Bryce 40 is 5'9, James Apolucci is 6'1. And that is generally who we are seeing. And he is stopped. Justin Meyer is stopped. But there is a flag thrown at the 37 yard line. And it looks like it might be holding. The offense looks like it knows that it's holding. Uh, the, head, the head crew chief is saying it is a holding on the offense. That'll back up St. Mary's to a third and 13 on Penn's 44. I, I, I don't know. I kind of feel like that's like with the false starts by teams. Why, why, is it, why do you even ask? <laughs> why do you not just take it? But in this situation, you could have taken that play and you could have forced a punt. 
but it was fourth and one and the third and two, so it was in between. They probably would have gone for a field goal, so I feel like it might be a smart play. We'll see if it pays off the Coach Yeoman's decision. Yes, and it's looking like the Kingsmen are going to a cover two as well. Let's hope they don't throw down the middle. Got it. The referee signaling catch at the 28 yard line. Um, that was a that was thrown up above his head. He catches it somehow, keeps his feet in bounds. Yes, that, that was just yeah, he like comes up with it or he does it in that situation. Push the pile to about the 23 yard line. Man, if you see St. Mary's, they're just having their way. Yeah, Penn has definitely got to not, not allow a touchdown here. Time is running out on the Kings, but they got to start to get the ball on score. Right, which ball are you getting the pen? Pen one. Pen off to Brandon Adams, and he runs into about the 14-yard line. And that is definitely what well, that definitely means that the Kingsmen need to stop if they want to have a chance to get the ball back in time. And that was a first down. Um, they are on the Kingsmen's 15 yard line. And and Parsman gets stopped. It is second ten, and they are still on the Kingsman fifteen yard line. All, literally, all St. Mary's has been doing this game has been running, running, running until they find it absolutely necessary to pass. And it's been working for them. Yes, it, uh, Justin and I are brings up to about the 10, 10 and a half yard line now. It's third and five. If you are St. Mary's, you're in perfect position to, no matter what happens, and I'm three and six and I'm the 11 yard line, you're easily within field goal distance, but you are also on the far side of the field, so you aren't necessarily kicking from the ideal position. And the wishbone. That that was definitely a that was a heavy hit. It is fourth and six, and it looks like Saint Ma it's fourth and five on the ten yard line, and it looks like Saint Mary's is going to go for it. The offense is out there. There is no sign of the kicker, but it it looks like yep. And they're gonna go for it. He doesn't look well in this situation. I, I don't know if there's really a, a wrong choice here because you're already up 24 to 14 with under seven minutes and 30 seconds in the fourth quarter. And if you don't get the first down, um, you you don't really do any harm. You do more damage to Penn in that situation because then they have to play with their backs really close to the end zone. St. Mary, St. Mary's all just call it timeout. So we might actually see the kicking unit at this point. Either way, I feel the St. Mary's coach is thinking. He goes for the field goal and they make it. It's a 13 point lead, or if they don't, if they don't get it, it's a 10 point lead. Or if they get the touchdown, it's a two possession lead at 17 points. So basically, a 10 and a 13 point lead is almost the same thing. It's, it's two scores. That would actually be a three point. That would be a three score lead. 
Well, I mean, I mean, well, yeah, because you can still get two touchdowns and convert to and that still leaves you down one. It, oh, wait. And their kicker looks like this. Yep, I, wait, no, no, no kicker. They are going for it. And he has been deadly accurate this game. Oh, and that's a touchdown, I believe. Oh, wait, but there's a flag. Now, it, that's most likely a holding because you had two receivers towards the near end zone where I believe that was Hamler that received the ball on what is generally called a jet sweep. He got it in he got it inside the pylon, but it does not matter. They were called back ten yards, so that would put them on the twenty yard line, makes it fourth down and fifteen, and we still have not seen the kicker. You would think at this point you would send your kicker out. No, he has yes. And, and he is kicking to the near hash of the scoreboard, which is the left hash. This is about a 40 yard field goal. This, this kid definitely has shown he has the leg. He, his snap balls up and it is up and it is made. Oh, wow. To the left. I, I think he has the leg for like a 55 yarder. He, that is um, just a very important, I guess, stop and miss for the Kingsmen. You can't, he, that, that's just some very perfect luck right there. If you're the Kingsman, you got to score quick. Yes, Penn has to be going. Campbell has to drive this team down. He's got seven minutes and they're down ten. Not only do they have to score, but they also have to get a stop again and then get the ball. Campbell to the shotgun with Cedric Bakalaki to his right. Gains Bakalaki. Bakalaki runs up the middle. Gains about two and a half, three yards. Ben's got to go under seven, under seven minutes now to play. At this point, you were, I would be assuming that they should be throwing the ball just because of the situation at hand. You're going on, the time is going away. And I'm 640 under and counting in the fourth quarter, second six from your own 24 yard line. Somehow gets out of there with gaining a few yards. That, wow, yeah. That was any game, right? That's impressive, actually. That line, the offensive line just collapsed on him. I don't, it kind of looked like. On the outside with the motion, he ran around Nolan Metcalf, which allowed him to go over, and the left tackle just could not get around the block. Him. Run in the shotgun, and it looks for Olsen. Olsen's open. He caught it. Oh, he is. Oh, he oh. Tackle down at the 41. Surely his tackle, saving possibly a touchdown. Olsen has that speed where he can just turn it off and on like that. Yes, and we, and we saw the front and on speed that he turned on on the kick return, on the, on the punt return. It was 59 yards in the very successful play. Here comes a no huddle spread up. And that is enough for a first down. No huddle. He's on. 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 He's
James Appalucci's lineup on the near side. All right. Wilson and Morty are on the far side. Cannon with a shotgun. Hand off to Wayne and Mars. At this point, you need a little bit more than just that because the first down stops the clock. And so, so does an incomplete pass, so yes. it makes more sense to be throwing here than running. Wayne and Mart's getting five on that. Bone is in the shotgun with seven o'clock. That's what it is. Wayne and Mart's getting five on that. Bone is in the shotgun with seven o'clock. That's what it is. Wayne and Mart's getting five on that. Bone is in the shotgun with seven o'clock. That's off target. All right, and that was. I wish that was a completed pass because that definitely would have been enough for a first down. Um, but on the other hand, we did also, I guess, if you want to look at it from the bright side, you stop the clock. So there's no more. Time, time now. And now the Kingsmen go to a huddle, which we haven't seen that much in the last couple of drives when they've had to go on a hurry. He's got Olsen and he's got it. He holds off to Makalaki. Makalaki finds a hole. Oh, he's dragging it all the way down to the 35 yard line. He might have been to the 34, but that is just a tremendous run by Cedric Makalaki. That run, you cannot do that very much any better. He was possibly just a shirt grim in a tackle away from having a very long run, if not a touchdown on that. Bone has trips to the left. He's in shotgun. He is ball. Bakalaki to his right. Hand off to Bakalaki. No, Cam Bone keeps it. Oh, he keeps it. He fooled everybody. And, that, and that's, that's a first, a first down. down. That should be a first And that is a first down. He fooled everybody there. I thought the running back had it, and he had it. Great read by Cam. Four minutes now. Penn has got to get in the end zone quick. Yes. And the good thing is the clock is not – has just now started, and we are not under four minutes just yet. But we are coming very, very close. And Luchy down to the right, two up to the left. Wilson and Morty. And up to Bakalaki. Rashid Fahim and not a, I don't know, it wasn't the best run, but at least it was positive yards. But the clock still continues to tick down when time is very precious. They are in the red zone now. Bones got Cam Bones in the shotgun. He's got two two receivers to the left, one to the right. He's looking at Bones. Wow! They call it no catch. That would have been an amazing catch, and it looks like Max Bernard's helmet came on. That was uh, that would have been an amazing catch if he would have completed it. Um, you also wonder that looked very borderline to him coming early on that hit. Yes, it looked like it looked like Bone had Avalucci down in the corner of the end zone, but he was he was all locked in on Olsen there. He's in the shotgun with Landon Martz next to him. Boat in the shotgun calls for the ball and he's running for it. He's running it. He's running. And there's a flag thrown. And there's a flag. It is, that, that can mean a many things since it is around where he got tackled. So it could be. It is a dead ball foul. They did not. I did not catch what it was, but it is most likely it could have been a face mask. mask. Face mask tackle on the bomb. And it's bringing, it's bringing Penn down to the six with three minutes and 23 seconds left to go. Penn down 24 to 14 to St. Mary's Prep from Michigan. He's going in the shotgun with Landon Marks to his right. He's got James Appalucci. 
or no, he's, my bad. He's got Bryce Ford up to his left, deep to his left, and he's got. Oh, and he's got a touchdown. And that makes it 24 to 20 with, uh, we believe, Sam Schultz to come on with three minutes and six seconds. Great QB draw by Cam Hall and read the hole and split it right there. Hey, Sam Schultz is on the field for Reggie Point. Uh, Matt Kukkiewicz is the older, and I believe Connor Snyder is the long snap. Here's the snap. Sam Schultz hits it. It is up and it is good. It is quarter quarter 21 with three minutes and six seconds left in the fourth quarter. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to come down to the very last play of the game. It, oh, well, he might have missed it. The, they have not, the referees look to have signaled that he made it, but the scoreboard has not put up the extra point. The scoreboard just now has put it up, but there is. There is a conference between the referees at about the five yard line. And we can only assume that is about where that field goal was made. Jared Hancock is going to kick off. And he has definitely, his leg has not been short when it's coming to booting on a kickoff. It looks. It, it looks like that huddle might have been the referees just to talk to each other. Yes. All right, and it does look like. Yeah, she definitely has to be careful of an onside kick in this situation. Just you, you might think about it if you're a pen. Oh, it's a swim. Oh, it's sitting down. Sit down. And there's a flag. There is a flag. It looks like to be holding. Possibly block in the back or flipping. And I am Tyler Clifton. I am signing off. And to replace me or relieve, however you want to put it, is Luke Bellotta. Thanks, Tyler. Luke Bellotta signing in, finishing this game up. Three minutes left in the fourth quarter. St. Mary's leads 24 to 21. It is a block in the back, but also a face mask against Penn. Those penalties will offset each other, and the ball will be placed at about 21. There might be a re kick. Yep, it looks like there's a re kick. We're going to do it again. Jared Hancock's going to come back out for Penn for his second kickoff. In the right and now, if you're Coach Yeoman, do you roll the dice with the onside kick or do you let it go? Lacey and Mays has been able to hold on to the ball and hold on to the type of possession in this game. I feel like you almost have to onside kick. We'll see if they fall asleep. Yeah, you can't let them drive down the field and have a time consuming drive. Hancock getting set up. Looking at the special teams unit, there are a lot of ball carriers and ball handlers on the field right now. The ball is standing straight up and down on the tee. Hancock gives a signal. Here comes the kick. 
Oh, and he kicks it. All the way to the back of the end zone. And St. Mary's prep, the Eagles will have the ball at the 20-yard line with three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. They leave Penn High School 24 to 21. Penn still has all three of their timeouts. So if they can get a quick three out possession, they still have time to drive down the field and possibly get the lead. Penn's defense looks ready to go as they are already on the field in the positions right now. Here comes St. Mary's in the line. Crowd starting to get into it. Brandon Devon under center in the wishbone offense. Oh, and he's hit behind the line. He's hit behind the line. He's hit at the 18 yard line. He falls at two yards. It looks like Penn has used the first of their timeouts until the clock with two minutes and 53 seconds left. Second on 11. That was exactly the play you were hoping for for Penn. Set the stop in the backfield. Penn called a timeout. They have two remaining with the two minute warning. No, there's no two minute warning in high school. Same here, he's just coming back onto the field. I need another stop. He's bringing it to Bone in the shotgun. He's got one star receiver. Jet sweeps and Jet sweeps and Gains about seven yards on the jet sweep run. Not enough for the first down. Looks like it's going to be third down. About four yards to go. Keeps going up the clock run right now. 22 seconds left on the play clock. Third and 11, third and three. Two minutes and 25 seconds. Left. This play is going to the side of the game. There's Javon and Shaka. Call score out. Timeout. Timeout, St. Mary's. Didn't like the, was it the play to come. Two minutes and 12 seconds left the ball game. Pencroft is really getting her up there. The coaching formation was not what St. Mary's was expecting. Wisely using one of their timeouts. Two minutes and 12 seconds now. Third and four at their own 27. St. Mary's, St. Mary's leads 24 21. So far on third down, it's kind of a to blitz most of the time. We'll see if they can see that trying this third down or if they stay back in time. He's got a wide open man for the first down. Where was the coverage? Right into the flat. He gained about seven yards, but that's what he needed. See, he didn't have a better run for about three yards everywhere. Wide open. Got the first down. That looks like that's going to be the ball game. Still some timeouts for Penn. Penn really needs a nice stop on this first down. You can't allow that first down. And I'm just glad he stopped. He stopped at the 21. He stopped the block just for a moment. 
And we'll use that second timeout, 201 left on the clock. One final timeout remaining. Second, second and second and nine. Okay, we've got about 15 seconds. Back to the next time the Kings will take the field is the next Friday night against South Bend Adams here at TCU Free Field. Here it is, Ben going back onto the field. Two minutes and one second remaining left on the scoreboard. It's 24 to 21 here. Second and nine. Tavone is in the He's under center in the wishbone. Three back set. Two, two tight ends. I think I'll have to get out to the inside running back. Three yards. Side is used for final timeout now. There's a minute 56 left. And it's third and down. This is Penn's last hope. If they get a first down, they could just kneel out the clock. It's going to be third down and six for the Eagle West with 156. It's like now that Penn is out of time, you have to run. Timeout now. It's been a hard-fought game, but mainly determined on the running game. Uh, St. Mary's has really ran the ball well, and Penn's amazing defense, who shuts down the run, did not do it this game. And then Cam Bone broke away for maybe three, four yards, or four carries of over 10 yards. The rushing was 232 to St. Mary's and 167 at Penn. But here it is now. Penn still has a chance down 24-21. It's third and six. A minute 56 left. To vote in the shotgun. Looks like they're going to take him out. 
And they do, and there's a flare to play. The ball start on the offense. Now they tell them why. 24 21 St. Mary's over the night. Eagle has the ball with 49 seconds left. 49 seconds left, and it is second and five. Third down, I believe. Second and 20. 49 seconds left. There's a knee. Looks like this is going to be Penn's first goal loss of 2020. St. Mary's takes the last knee to end the game. And that is the game. St. Mary's St. Mary's Prep Eaglets has won it 24 to 21 at TCU Free Field over the Penn Kingsman. Penn Kingsman will drop to 3 and 1 as St. Mary's improves to 3 and 0. They are the defending state champs in Michigan. Uh, and you have to tip your caps. They really exploded off the pen off the line and the Pens, they took Penn strength on defense. They took it right away, running the entire time. Yeah, they sure proved it why they're number one in this year. Now the final game stands. Um, so St. Mary's had 144 yards passing and had 137. Uh, St. Mary's had 233 rushing yards to Penn's 167, and that really was the story. It is only a 70-yard difference, but it was also two, t two touchdowns difference right there. And there was there was one fumble lost by the Kingsmen, which turned out to be a costly error by Cam Boone as they were driving. And Cam Boone was finished 4 for 16 for 137 yards and a touchdown, while Brandon Tabone of St. Mary's finished 8 for 9 for 144 yards and a touchdown. Rushing for St. Mary's, PJ Bauer was five, had five rushes for 92 yards and one touchdown. And Brandon Adams had 12 rushes for 66. Justin Merrick added 19 rushes for 45 yards. Rushing for Penn, Cam Bone, 11, uh, 20 rushes for 96 yards and one touchdown. Cedric Makalahi added 58 yards on his eight touches. Then March had two rushes for nine yards. Receiving for Orchard Lake St. Mary's was KJ Handler with three receptions for 82 yards. Griffin Sheposh with two catches for 38 yards. Ryan Johnson added two, two more catches, and Troy Marks had one catch for 11 yards. Penn had only three receivers making catches today. Bryce Gorday with nine for 73 yards and a touchdown. John Olson had four for 54 yards. And Nolan Metcalf added one catch for 10 yards. Once again, the final here at TCU Free Field. St. Mary's 24, Penn 21. I'm Sam Paternas. I'm Luke Lada, and for the night, we're signing off. See you next week, folks.